It has been a couple weeks since I first released my review for the Techno Pocket Go. And in that time, I've used the device more, and I think it's a really cool device. But my one glaring, very obvious problem with the device is the lack of a screen. The whole idea Techno sold this device on is portability, having a big screen wherever you go. And it isn't exactly the most practical solution for those purposes. You can't exactly play this device everywhere you go. You can't play it when you're in a public area because you look like a criminally insane person. And if you play at home all the time, yeah, it's perfect for that. But the moment you start like going out places and even in like if you're like in an airplane setting, you know, I feel like that is a setting that makes a lot of sense for this kind of a device. But some people might not be comfortable with the idea of not being able to be fully aware of their surroundings. And then that sort of landlocks this device to traveling. So if you're in a hotel, uh, staying at a friend's place. Uh, but when you're home, you might as well just use a gaming PC unless this is your only device. And then wearing the glasses all the time aren't exactly a fun solution. Because I also have to wear normal glasses. And no matter how many times I adjust it, I can't get it quite perfect to match my eyes. So I found myself thinking, well, I use an external display before during testing because the, the Type-C ports are capable of carrying out a display port signal. Might as well try to find a very small portable display and find out some way to affix it to the controller. So I went onto Amazon and I found this random rod mod i have no idea how to pronounce this company's name it is a seven inch screen initially designed for raspberry pis it is an ips display with a resolution of 1024 by 600 so it's basically widescreen 480p or 640p in quality so it's not exactly a beautiful display and even at 7 inches, you can count those pixels. This is a lower resolution screen than the Switches, so it is a little obvious how low res the screen is, but it also is a touch screen, and higher resolution models were significantly more expensive. And this one comes out to the lovely price of $80 if you wanted to recreate the, this yourself. I'll leave a link down below for if you were interested in this. Bear in mind though, this is the one that had like the most reviews and it seemed like the most trusted one. I already have had one die and the current one I'm using is a little weird. So be prepared for a return possibly. The way I affixed the screen to the device itself was through a mount that I found online, also on Amazon. This mount by Mechanicism or Mechanism. I don't honestly know how to pronounce that company's name either, but they're basically a company that made all those things that allows you to attach a battery to a Steam Deck, a phone to your Xbox controller. And that's the kind of mount I, I've used for this instance. I bought this mount pack that initially was designed for an Xbox One controller, but came with a universal mount that I was able to attach to the battery cover. And then I was able to attach the display sort of phone mount section to that. And it comes with a MagSafe attach sort of magnet array sticker so you can uh, stick that to a non magsafe capable device and in this instance i attached it to a 3d printed enclosure that i made for the screen to protect it because it is a bare pcb on the back completely shredded in acer 3-in-1 hdmi usb-c hub and sort of stuffed that inside behind the display and had one cable the type c connector to the hub coming out for display and power for the screen. The screen comes with an embedded HDMI cable that is a ribbon cable style. So I was able to fold that nicely inside the enclosure. Unfortunately, I had no footage of that and I am not taking this thing apart. It's already finicky as it is, so apologies. But overall, this did improve the experience. One of the many problems with this device is not necessarily any fault of its own, just by the nature of its form factor. Since it had no touchscreen, it sort of removed one of the major input methods for a PC. And considering this runs Windows, that is really, really annoying. Because the joy to mouse stuff is honestly really good on this device. But it is just faster to touch a screen. It's to use the controller 
as a mouse. I really enjoyed my time using it in this configuration, and the nice thing is that it's entirely reversible. All you do is just detach the mount and unattach the screen from the magnet, and boom, it is now easily totable. You can put it in your bag. I might make a case for it at some point, but I probably won't. And it's easily convertible back into its original state, minus the fact that the mount will forever be stuck to it until I remove it. But you won't even feel it if you don't have insanely massive hands or something like that. But you know what isn't insanely massive? This segue to our sponsor, Ugreen. Ugreen is showcasing their Uno series where to specifically they're showcasing the Ugreen Uno 100 watt charger. With 100 watts of fast charging through a single port capable of charging all your devices and even your laptop. It also uses the latest GAN Infinity charging chip, enhancing energy conservation, efficiency, and enabling faster charging speeds while having it come in this nice, convenient, small size. Ugreen is also showcasing the Ugreen Uno 2-in-1 magnetic wireless charging at 15 watts. The new magnetic 2-in-1 charger supports the all-new Qi 2 standard, supporting all the latest Apple devices, including AirPods, with up to 70 degrees of adjustability, allowing you to see your phone screen from any angle. Most of the Uno collection also has a fun screen on it to display whether or not you are charging, even the chargers. And if you find any of this stuff super cool and interesting, go down and check the links down below, and thanks for watching. Now that we've discussed the construction of what you see before you, it is important to remind yourself that this isn't an official thing, so this ended up coming out way creakier than I intended. It is a little wobbly, the weight distribution is not great, and it is not the most stable feeling thing on the planet. Even though the screen has never fallen off once, I am worried about the battery cover ripping out. And the actual experience playing with this system is different, and I definitely found myself playing on it longer than I did with the glasses, because after a certain amount of time, I, the glasses would give me a headache. And being able to use the screen after that was really nice. But something important to notice is that it is a one cable solution. So the screen pulls power from the game system. And that would be a degrade on the battery life. And yeah, the battery life is not going to say seriously impacted, but it is noticeable. I was able to play Destiny 2 at 15 watts on this thing with the screen attached for about an hour and a half at best. And before, I was able pretty much to get to two hours at 15 watts. So adding a screen did take a sizable chunk out of the battery life, but that wasn't exactly consistent amongst other games. I didn't notice an appreciable difference when playing games like Stardew Valley. And like I said, portability was actually, in my opinion, not necessarily improved, but achieved the same level of portability as the system currently does. Because you still need to carry two things when you have the glasses and the controller in their cases. And what I created, while not necessarily takes up less space, it is still broken out instead of two things, it's three things, the, the mount, the screen, and the controller. And it is fairly easy to pack it away and whip it out if you wanted to play it, though I feel like you'd still look a little crazy with that when you're playing it instead of the glasses, but it's better, but not by much, but it's still an improvement. This is the first time I ever 3D printed and modeled something. It wasn't easy, and I used an existing model and remixed it into something that I could use better. And I've learned a lot from the construction of this device. And I am really excited for what I can do in the future now that I have a crazy contraption like a 3D printer. I've already started 3D printing a bunch of random accessories for all the game systems I have. And my thoughts on the Techno Pocket Go haven't really changed either. This is an amazing device, but it suffers from very large flaws for some people. Not to mention the fact that when this thing is fully released, it could cost upwards of $2,000 unless you want to buy just the controller which you can get that for about 600 now. But that won't last forever. At least at time of recording, that's still the case, but probably by the time this comes out or a little bit after, that early bird pricing is probably all sold out. But I would highly recommend, if you get this device when it fully comes out next year, 
I would definitely recommend you go and try this. This is a really fun thing to do, a nice Sunday afternoon project, assuming you have a fast enough 3D printer, of course. And for me, I really enjoy the process too. And it, even if I don't end up using it a whole lot in this configuration, it, it's just nice to know that I have it. I would love to hear what you guys think. Would you try this for yourself? Are you interested in a solution like this for an official accessory for this device? I would love to hear all your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.